Hello, in this video we will examine femora acetabular joint arthrokinematics. Femora acetabular joint possesses three degrees of freedom, meaning it moves in all three cardinal planes. It is important to note that femora acetabular joint functions in non-weight bearing, otherwise known as an open kinematic chain, and weight bearing, otherwise referred to as a closed kinematic chain. In non-weight bearing, the distal segment moves on the proximal segment. Thus, femur will move on the acetabulum. In weight bearing, the proximal segment moves on the distal segment. Therefore, the acetabulum moves on femur. Remember, weight bearing versus non-weight bearing movement dictates the orthokinematics at the joint. In non-weight bearing, the convex femur dictates the kinematics. When a convex member moves on top of the concave member, the roll and the glide will occur in the opposite directions. In weight bearing, acetabulum dictates the kinematics, so a concave surface moves on the convex. The roll and the glide will occur in the same direction. In this video, we will examine the orthokinematics for a non-weight bearing femoris tabular joint movement. It moves in the sagittal plane for flexion and extension. It moves in the frontal plane for abduction and adduction and the transverse plane for internal and external rotation. Let's look at the sagittal plane first. Here, the femur spins on top of the acetabulum. With flexion, femur spins posterior. Observe the greater trochanter move posterior. With extension, femur spins anterior. Observe the greater trochanter move anterior. Now, the frontal plane. During femoris tabula abduction, femur rolls superior and glides inferior. During femoris tabula adduction, femur rolls inferior. and glides superior. And last but not least, the transverse plane. During femoris tabula internal rotation, femur rolls anterior. And glides posterior. During femora acetabula external rotation, femur rolls posterior and glides anterior. Let's examine a clinical scenario to which we can apply the orthokinematics we just learned. Emily is a 23-year-old college soccer player. She complains of right hip pain since about two months ago, without any mechanism of injury. You read the doctor's referral, which states, femora acetabular impingement. So, you decide to start with the examination. You note the right internal rotation is limited to 40 degrees. You decide to proceed with joint mobilization. Question, which direction would you mobilize the femur? Okay. Let's answer this. Remember, you always mobilize in the direction of the joint's glide. So, if you were to regain internal rotation movement, you need to mobilize the femur posterior. Here is Anne. She's finally regained her full range of motion and is now back to playing soccer. Good job. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a like and subscribe.